we are back for parts of the modern periodic table. Um, so this is um, mostly a review. I mean, we've you've been using the periodic table. You've seen it before. But just some of the things you want to remember. Um, when you're talking about periods or rows, those are going across. So, like, if you look, um, like, your second row of the periodic table, you go lithium, beryllium, and then you go over and you hit boron, carbon, and you're going across. That's a period. Um, and just because you're in the same period or row does not mean that you are the same or similar. So um, just because carbon is next to nitrogen does not really have any effect on them being similar. It just means that carbon has six protons and nitrogen has seven. Um, families or groups are the ones that we're more interested in typically in chemistry. Um, they are a vertical column. So they're the ones that um, are the up and down. Um, and they're the ones that are very... Um, very similar. So like if you have potassium and you need to replace it for some reason, you would look in, in potassium's family to find that. And just so you know, I mean, I'll come right back to this, but um, here's the periodic table. So when we're talking about our families, we're talking about like um, the up and the down. So this right here is the alkaline earths. And obviously this would be our next one. This is family three and so on and so forth, family four. Um, so when we talk about those families, that's what we're looking for, the ones that um, they have the same number of valence electrons, which makes them very similar electronically. So we're going to go through just some of the different um, families. Um, so the first ones we're going to look at are in the uh, S block. So, um, I'll, and again, I'll come back to this in a second, but when I'm talking about the S block, on the periodic table, let me just get a little highlighter here. Um, this is our S block over here. So anything in these two rows um, is typically considered the S block. So the very first one we have is hydrogen, and he is an orphan element. He's in family number one, but he's um, is truly a unique element and doesn't have anyone that's really typically that similar to him. So he's kind of the, the loner of the periodic table. Uh, the next family is the alkali metals. They are in family number one, obviously, excluding hydrogen. And these are the ones that are really reactive that you have to store under, um, you have to store under kerosene or some kind of heavy oil so that they don't actually um, react with oxygen or, or moisture in the air um, because they are quite explosive and reactive. Um, they are very soft. They are shiny like a metal, but they're almost like a hard um, dough or clay. Um, and you can take a butter knife, you can take your fingernail, and you can cut into them. Very low melting point, and again, because they are so reactive, you're not going to find them in nature. Uh, by themselves because they will chemically react with anything they can really get their little hands on. And again, I'll come right back, but what we're talking about here is these are our alkali metals right here in this uh, family. So if you're looking, that's where we're at. The other group that's in the S block are the alkaline earth metals, um, and they're very similar to the alkaline metals. They are pretty soft, they are pretty reactive, but they're not, they're a little bit harder, a little bit denser, and a little bit less reactive. Um, you're still not going to find an alkaline earth metal um, in nature because they will chemically react, but um, they aren't quite as explosive as the alkaline earths. Next groups we're going to look at, um, we're going to look at the P group, and the P group is over here. So the, anytime I say P block, this is the P block, and this will make more sense. The S's and the P's and stuff will make more sense um, in uh, with electrons. So just so you know where we're going. Um, so we have the boron family, which is number thirteen, the carbon family, which is fourteen, the nitrogen family, which is fifteen, and then it's either called the oxygen or chalcogen group. It doesn't matter which one you call it, um, and they're uh, number sixteen. Um, and what you'll notice um, is that these um, don't really have that many trends with them because they have um, they have metals in them, they have non-metals in them, and they also have metalloids, so they're pretty variable. They all, have, if you're in the same family, you have the same amount of um, valence electrons, but you don't have um, the same, necessarily act exactly the same. The last two families, um, we're talking about the halogens. So again, I'll jump right back. Halogens are right here, it's number 17. Um, they're the really reactive non-metals. Um, and the re where they get their name from is, is because they mean salt former. 
And then our very last um, one, number 18, are the noble or inert gases. And basically they're very unreactive. And you can read about them in your, um, in your book. All right. Um, the next section are the transition metals or elements, and you can see they're right in this section of the periodic table, and that is called the D block. <coughs> um, they have some interesting chemistry. They make these things called coordination complexes, which is just a very unusual chemistry. Um, one example of a transition metal um, complex is disappearing ink. Another one is your hemoglobin in your blood. So um, we, they have a lot of biological impact. They also, a lot of them can become poisons. Um, one thing that these guys can have is they, they can have um, more than one charge. So what we call that is multiple oxidation states. So um, they just have some, they have some special abilities because they are kind of a unique section of the periodic table. And then the very bottom of our periodic table are these guys in your transition metals and stuff like that. And if we go on the periodic table, when I say the inner transition metals, they're these guys at the bottom. So you can see it says lanthanide and actinides. And these are the ones, they're, they're part of the periodic table. They're just kind of pulled down there because they're not that common and we don't study them that often. Um, but they are there and they are in the F block. So obviously lanthanides start with lanthanum. And they're kind of considered the rare earth elements because they exist on earth, but not very commonly. The actinide series is, uh, starts with actinium, and they are all radioactive, so these are much um, more unusual elements. <laughs> you only find 90 to 92, number 92, number 92 on earth, and if you look after, um, after uranium, they're called transuranium, and they're not going to be found on earth. Um, the only way you would find the transuranium elements is if they actually produce them in a particle accelerator. So like if you've ever heard of CERN or anything like that, that's where they make those elements. But you're never going to like find them walking down the street. So this will be the last thing of the um, slide of this section. Um, and you want, there is a blank one in the back of your... Um, no packet, so you probably want this filled out so that you want to know it. Uh, the orangey sections here are the metalloids that are listed. So remember, those are ones that are not typically metals, but not typically nonmetals as well. Purples are our gas, or I'm sorry, our nonmetals, and all the yellow are the metals.